Hi guys, it's me, Indiana Jones, and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, please, please leave me a comment below. I'd love to find out how you found out about me. And if you're a returning friend, I appreciate your time that you spend with me. This is a special collaboration with Teresa of Our Green Acres. I love watching Teresa's videos. I have been watching her for a while, and I've always loved the shabby chic French country couture kind of style. Not too glammy, just that shabby chic kind of I don't know, country kind of style. I really, really love it. And she, to me, is the queen of shabby chic. She's creative, thrifty, um, you know, faith-filled woman that it shows. It shows in everything she does. And I'm so grateful that she allowed me to collaborate with her on this today. So let's see what I came up with that's shabby and chic. <laughs> let's go. For my first DIY, I have to say this was an inspiration from Teresa herself. I watched as she used a Victoria's Secret umbrella and created a wall decor hanging for spring. And I thought, you know what? I want to make a wall parasol. So that's what I'm making here. What I'm using are those super long skewer sticks that come out now during the summertime, which are great for roasting marshmallows, but they're also great for a lot of crafts. And then I'm using some EVA foam, which you can buy at any craft store. You can also use cardboard. I just had EVA foam on hand and thought it would be easier to work with. And all I'm making here is a triangle, which is going to be the back or the base of my wall parasol. To strengthen it, I'm just putting some skewers going across horizontally and now the vertical stick, which is going to be the handle of my parasol. Now I'm gluing down the main, I guess, handle, stick, whatever you want to call it, right through the middle. And that's thanks to Surebonder, my Surebonder handy dandy glue gun. Um, I'm going to be putting down all the supports for the back of this wall parasol. Again, I got the skewers at the Dollar Tree. And what I'm going to use now for the webbing in between, just to keep the shape, is I'm going to use one of those tomato cages and you'll see what I mean in just a moment. You know how they have the round part or the round wire. You can also use the wired um, wreaths that are out there. And all I do is cut off like a, three quarters of the circle. It's not going to be a, a, an, an exact half circle, but like three quarters of the circle, just so you have enough space to put in all the flowers that you wish into your wall parasol. I used two sizes, I used the large and the small, and secured it with the hot glue once I poked it through the foam. And here I am going to cut down the smaller one to fit at the bottom to, again, help the parasol keep its shape. Now I measured out two skewers to be like the main two skewers in the front and I used the pointy part to be the top, you know, kind of like you would see in, um, in a parasol. For some reason they have like little pointy ends. Now you can add gems or pearls or whatever you want to those little pointy ends. I just left it natural. Maybe I should add something. I'm probably going to hurt myself one day. I usually hurt myself crafting. It's just part of my MO. I don't know why. It's just, I don't know if I'm careless or I'm just trying to do things too fast. So here I'm just securing the two main supports for the front, but there will be more skewers that I adhere to the front of the parasol so that it keeps its lovely parasol shape. Lucky thing, I always hoard fabric whenever it goes on sale and these are both from Hobby Lobby. I love this neutral, handwriting script fabric and if I make another parasol I definitely will I'm probably going to use this fabric but and then I had this beautiful springy I don't know happy fabric that had like French postcards and butterflies all over it I just thought it was perfect for spring and for summer as well besides my mother has already claimed dibs on my first parasol so she liked this fabric more so now the most important thing here is to secure your fabric to the back of the parasol, which is again going to be glued to that EVA foam or cardboard, whatever you decide to use. And once you anchor it down onto one side, just to make sure that as you roll it 
around that you keep it nice and taut. Taut? Tight? Taut? I don't know. We, whatever you want to say. And as you do that, it will take the shape of the parasol without any buckling or wrinkling. It, it'll turn out just fine. It really is very easy. And once we're done with um, securing the front to the back, all we're going to do is now fold over the fabric. And as I'm folding it over, you can see that I'm making these little dips into the fabric. So it gives it more of an umbrella shape, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, and once it's all done, I did put a little bit of fabric on the inside to line the inside so you don't see the brown. If it's empty, you just see a nice fabric. And there it is. There you can see the parasol shape. Now, of course, you can add whatever trim you want. I had this antique gold lace and I just thought it was so perfectly French and romantic. So that is the lace that I am using. I also had an idea of using like fringe. Have you ever used like fringe or beaded trim? That would also be beautiful. But basically anything that you'd like to use, you can use uh, beads, even wooden beads, uh, a string of wooden beads or pearls. You can make it your own. But I just thought this was very Victorian looking with this old fashioned antique gold lace at the edge. Now what's a parasol without a handle? So that's what I'm creating here with some of that soft rope from the Dollar Tree. If you see this stuff, buy it in bundles because it disappears and flies off the shelves. Probably because I'm buying it in bundles. But seriously, this is the perfect item to use to make this handle effect for my parasol. And of course, I'm going to top it off with something from Totally Dazzled. Thanks to Teresa for sharing that wonderful site with me and with all of us. And here is your wall parasol. Or actually, it's my wall parasol, but I would love to see it if you make your own wall parasol for spring or summer or for the coming seasons. Enjoy. Next, I want to share a thrift flip. One of the things I love about Teresa's channel is when she does her, well, first her thrifting hauls and then she does her thrift flips. It's amazing. The stuff that she can find, but even more impressive is how she can just change things by adding a little bit of paint and love. Now, this is one of the techniques I learned from Teresa, which is first to use some candle wax, especially on areas that are very ornate, such as the trim for this little lamp that I found. Actually, I found this in the garbage, as you can see. It was in pretty bad shape. I cleaned it up and I thought I'll paint it. But first, I want to make sure I can see these beautiful details after I paint it. Now here I'm using a combination of a little bit of gray and a warmer white color. I don't know, grayish. I don't know what color you call this. But I originally was going to decoupage and then I changed my mind as to what I wanted for this lamp. Now here comes the fun part. Before it's completely dry, you're going to take a wet rag and just gently rub it across those areas that are very ornate, which I had placed the wax on, so that the paint wouldn't completely adhere to the item. And it works like a charm. You don't have to scrape, you don't have to sand, you just rub it off. It just rubs right off. And it just makes such a difference because those little details you know, on the trim is what makes this lamp so special, so shabby chic and wonderful. So I hope you guys try this technique. Again, I learned this from Teresa at Our Green Acres. Thanks again, Teresa. So instead of decoupaging, I'm going to use a raised stencil. You can also use like IOD molds and clay, but I had this beautiful crown stencil and all I'm using is some of that spackle that you get at the Dollar Tree and a little bit of paint to color it. Of course, you can color spackle. And there is my stencil of this crown. I just thought it would be perfect in that little space. And I just wanted something light and subdued. And afterwards, um, you'll see 
One of the most important things when you do a raised stencil is to cover all the area completely. Make sure that the stencil is secured. You don't want to move it around. I would have taped it, but because the tape was, or the, I'm sorry, before it, because the paint was still kind of wet, I didn't want to damage the paint I'd already done. And here's the reveal. And there's our beautiful little raised crown. You can fix it up. As you can see, I just noticed there was a little spot there. And I'm just going to touch that up with a little bit of paint. And there you have your raised stencil. Now, I'm going to touch that up as well so that it looks like the rest of the lamp. And I think you can see it here a little bit that I just dabbed on a little bit of that paint. Like I dry brushed it once the stencil was dry. Now, I was in a bit of confusion as to what to do with the... I, I couldn't take the... Um, the, sh the ah what is that called the thing on top of the lamp you know what it's called I couldn't take that off for whatever reason I couldn't screw it off so I couldn't really do much with that and I wanted to change the fabric so all I did here was just put some lace on top and I think it worked out pretty well now I just wanted to share with you my mini thrift haul so I found this beautiful little mirror I thought it was just adorable and darling and it's really heavy it's like iron that was only three dollars and then to go with it I found this clock just at another store and it's so perfect the little bird and the colors everything I wouldn't change a single thing about this little clock except probably change the battery then I found this I just thought this was darling this was a dollar at uh, Goodwill I believe it was just perfect little Victorian kind of holder and then I found this little tray also I think this was a dollar fifty it was half off the three dollar price and although I like this very much I didn't like the design at the bottom and I don't like the black so I'm just going to paint over this real quick with my homemade chalk paint which is basically paint with a little bit of either baking soda or baking powder or talcum powder and it's any kind of powder just to give it a little bit of oomph and then once I'm done with the edging I had this one little piece of uh, paper and I thought I would just rip it apart to make it look more worn now I know it's not the exact size but that's fine I just I don't know I just like that I wish it was like fabric or something it looks so Victorian and um, old-timey so I just wanted to use that and I wanted something that was dark enough to cover that little bathtub and now I'm just decoupaging it of course with Mod Podge from the Plaid family of products and I'm also decoupaging it with a little bit of the paint being dragged through you'll see in just a moment so it adds to the wear and tear look of the of the material and you know here I am we're using a little roller from Plaid thank you Plaid I just think it came out darling. I really liked it and it's perfect for my home. Now last but not least, this is what I'd like to call a bonus craft for this video. I have done this live on my channel but I wanted to share it. This is a way of using plastic spoons to make roses. Now I've seen this done with large spoons but I've never seen it done with these small or d'oeuvre spoons that you can buy at the Dollar Tree. They're silver and once you heat them up, they actually turn into a dull silver color, almost looking like pewter. It's absolutely adorable. You'll see it in just a moment. I suggest you do not do this with children. You do this when you're relaxed and take your time. And all you basically need are these little mini spoons from the Dollar Tree and um, these jewelry, uh, I don't know what this jewelry thing. I cannot remember names of things today. It's it's late. It's after work. I can't think of anything. Pincers, whatever you want to call it. Um, tongs, I don't know. But you're just basically going to melt the plastic and manipulate it to look like a rose. So here I'm doing the inner rosebud and it just takes a lot of patience as you can see I did not speed this up I wanted to take my time showing you how to make this because I tell you once you learn how to do this you will use rose embellishments in everything you do you can also make other flowers I have made orchids and other types of flowers I can't remember exactly what 
but as long as it's like a complex flower like a rose or an orchid it works pretty well with this i don't think i've ever tried to make a sunflower i don't think it's possible with this but who knows maybe with the larger spoons again i have seen other people do it but i had never seen anybody do it with the smaller spoons the way i do i have another video where i do this as well about two years ago and more most recently just last year i did it and uh just the other night i did it live it's so much fun to show how to do this live because people are just like oh, i didn't know you could do that and you just like pretty much melt it down it's a lot of fun because you almost feel like it's real metal and you just melt it down and manipulate it and there i am pulling the petal off of the spoon and don't throw these little oh it's fire you know i like to set things on fire don't throw away those handles of those spoons you will see they will come in handy for another craft that i have in mind now again take your time be patient when adding another petal to the rosebud all i'm doing is burning the plastic down and that creates and there it is on fire and that creates its own kind of glue it just meshes into the other plastic rose or the plastic bud don't worry if the first time you try this it doesn't work it took me a while to get to this point where i can just add things and it works and again you can reinforce the connection between the petal and the rosebud just by adding a little more heat and melding them together. It's just like, I don't know, it feels like iron work almost or jewelry work. Believe it or not, I have made jewelry out of this. I've made necklaces and people have come up to me and thought it was real pewter and were stunned at how light these necklaces are because it's plastic. Repeat the process until you have all the petals added to your rosebud. You can add as many as you like, and you can also use E6000 or hot glue if you prefer, but I've gotten used to just melting the plastic and joining the petals to the rosebud. Now enjoy the rest of the process. Once you're done creating your rose and putting the petals one by one, I leave it on the handle of that spoon just to make it easier to literally handle the rose over the open flame. But once I'm done, all I have to do is remove it from the spoon handle and we're done. There are your silver roses. Look how pretty they look. Now, how to use them, I'll show you in just a minute. So I have this mason jar that I created in a previous craft which is simply a mason jar with a little bit of chalk paint and i'm adding a ribbon just to add a little embellishment and adding a little bow now and now on top of this i'm going to add my roses and again you can paint this you can take this outside and spray paint it just like you would anything that's plastic you can spray paint them any color you can dry paint them or i, I guess dry brush them with a little bit of paint just to make it match. Yes, I feel like I should receive a crown. I always want to put things on my head anyway. But oh my gosh, I am so excited that I was able to make this. I didn't know how I was going to engineer it, but I did it. I did it. And thanks to you, Teresa, for being the inspiration of taking an umbrella from Victoria's Secret and putting some flowers in it. I came up with a thought of making a wall parasol. So I hope all of you guys try this at home. If you do, please share it on Instagram with me. Teresa, I can't thank you enough for collaborating with me and for always sharing your creativity, your love of shabby chic and your kindness, your sweetness and the joy that you share with each and every one of us in your videos. For all of you out there, thanks for coming by and please like, share and subscribe. And as I always like to say to my friends, stay safe, 
be kind. God bless each and every one of you. And remember to live the adventure. I do feel like Miss America now. My crown, someone, my crown. <laughs> See you soon. DIYs, thrift flips, store hauls, life crafting, decor, and more. It's all here at Indiana Jones. Try it out.